everyone. I'm Lisa from Pink Holly Bush Designs. Welcome to my sewing studio. Today I am going to talk to you about upgrading your sewing machine. Now as sewists, our sewing machines are the workhorse that enable us to enjoy our hobby and to create those beautiful things that we sew. But how do you make a decision? You can spend anywhere from $200 for a basic machine all the way up to $10,000. And um, especially if the budget doesn't allow for that $10,000 purchase, or maybe you're just somebody who wouldn't be comfortable with all those bells and whistles and you just want um, a simple machine that's going to let you sew, um, how do you spend your dollars wisely Make sure you get the features that you need and that you um, aren't going to have buyer's regret after you purchase that machine. So I have some considerations for you before you even go shopping. And then um, I have some recommended features. And they're not just my recommendations. I pulled my readers um, to get and ask them, what are the features you would not want to live without? So let's dive in and um, talk about upgrading sewing machines. So the first consideration is the available space that you have and um, the level of portability that you need. And those are kind of a little bit different, although they are related. So the first one is the space. So right now I have a sewing studio and I have um, a uh, sewing business. So I have space for my sewing machine, but that was not always the case. There are, um, were many years that I did um, sewing on um, the dining room table. And so um, being a, I needed a machine that only took a small space that I could put away easily. And um, and so it needed to be small and it needed to be portable. Um, once I did have a little bit more of a dedicated space, it still was small and so I needed it to be a small machine. So you might not want something as big as this. Um, when I purchased this machine, I actually didn't think about portability and that's a little bit different issue. So are you somebody who goes to sewing machine classes quite often or um, sewing retreats? Um, I get together with my sewing girlfriends a time or two a year and so I am hauling this little baby when I go and that's a difficult thing to do. As I said, something I didn't think about. So um, if you're going to be in that situation, um, yes, some of my friends have their large machine and then they have a separate travel machine. Of course, that's a, an additional expense. But also, when you get used to sewing on kind of the bigger one that has all the bells and whistles, do you want just this inexpensive one to go take your classes with? that can be, you know, maybe not the situation you want to be in. So think about um, those two issues. The next one is what is the local support available to you? Um, especially if you're buying a higher end, but even if you're just buying the middle of the road, you're making a significant financial investment in this machine and they need to be serviced regularly. So what brands are in your area that you can get your machine to for that yearly service. And also you want to look at what if there's a problem, who, who can fix it for you, right? But also what type of classes do they have? I mean these machines now, they are computers, they do all kinds of things. You need some lessons to how to make the most of it. The manuals usually leave something to be desired. So what classes does your local um, shop carry? So you can really learn how to make the most of your machine. Now, you also want to ask what those classes are like. My local shop has classes, but they're not dedicated to my machine. 
and they're not one-on-one -on -one just for me. So when they tell you almost all um, shops will give you classes, but do a little bit more investigation and find out what those classes actually entail. Um, I just found the ones that my local shop had really weren't that helpful. Which brings me to my next tip. Do a little Googling and see if there are any online classes available for the brand you're considering. Um, Bernina has online classes just for my machine, so that um, would be tremendously helpful. Also, look on YouTube. See if there's anybody doing um, tutorials specifically on your machine. Um, I have found that there are a couple, two different ones, that do tutorials on my specific machine. Again, that's helpful. Um, also helpful if um, you see some of just what's available for the brand you're considering. So not just how to work with your machine, but how to do some minor repairs. For example, you know, if it's nine o'clock at night and you're trying to finish the dress for the next day and the bobbin gets stuck, is there a tutorial that you're going to find on YouTube that's going to solve the problem for you and walk you right through it? So all of that is helpful um, in picking out what particular model and brand that you're going to go with. Okay features. We are going to get into specific features, but you also really want to look um, if there's features that you know you want. Figure that out before you ever go to the shop and you can figure that out by looking at the brand's website and at all those different models that they have. What features do you want? Um, for example, um, I do heirloom sewing. So I knew um, when I bought the machine actually two machines before this um, when um, the budget was quite tight that I wanted um, some of the basic heirloom sewing stitches such as the Parisian hem stitch, the pin stitch, and the Venetian hem stitch. Well, I bought the least exp expensive machine that had those stitches. But I figured that out by looking online. When I went to the local shop, they didn't know what I was talking about when I talked about those stitches. So um, if you're somebody, for example, who does a lot of sewing with knits or um, quilting, maybe you want a dual feed. What is the least expensive machine that carries that? Um, if you sew jeans or bags, maybe you need a machine that's going to handle leather or those thicker fabrics and you might want to look for features um, that particularly handle those things. Okay, so figure that out online first. The other thing to figure out online, if you can, is what is the popular model? And you'll partly also figure that out by going to the shop. But that goes back to that support issue. Um, sewing machine brands often make machines in a series. So this um, is the 790 plus. There were um, three other models in the 700 series. And I went to the shop intending to buy a different one within this 700 series. But the 790 plus is the popular model. It's the one that was at the shop. It's also the one that's on YouTube. So um, getting that popular model means that you'll often have more support for it. It's the model that the, the brand and the shops are carrying. It's not gonna get discontinued as soon. You'll find more resources to help you with it. So going with that can be um, a plus. Okay, finally, last consideration. You do want to go to the store and you want to see a demonstration. There's just so much you're going to be able to tell by seeing the machine in action. Um, and that online research isn't going to tell you. When you go to the shop, make sure you take with you fabrics that you work with. 
Um, this shop is going to have a basic quilting cotton or a basic duck fabric that they're using to show you um, things on the machine. If you sew with a batiste or a chiffon or leather or jeans, you want to see how that machine is going to handle with those materials. So take some of those scraps with you and ask them to give you a demonstration with um, those um, materials. Okay, let's talk features. What are some particular features that you want to make sure that you look for? And um, I have a nifty pie chart that'll show you these, but um, let's um, let me show you on my machine. So when I pulled my readers, the um, number one feature they said they would not want to um, do without on their sewing machine is the needle up down feature. And what that does is by setting the needle down, when the machine stops, like it is right now, that needle stops down in the fabric rather than um, up in the fabric. And the advantage of this is just the control it gives you as you're sewing along. So the second feature that um, my readers said they didn't want to do without is the dual feed. And this is the dual feed. It comes right behind here. So your sewing machine has the feed dogs here at the bottom, which feed the fabric through. But the dual feed is a separate um, mechanism that feeds the fabric from the top. So it works like a walking foot. It's especially helpful with um, any fabric that slips. It's helpful with thicker fabrics, with knits, and also um, with quilting fabrics if you're trying to match um, plaids or stripes, um, trying to be exact because it's feeding both the top and the bottom of the fabric through simultaneously. Now, it is something that you use usually on a higher end machine. And if that is outside of your budget, then look at what, um, if your machine comes with a walking foot and how much that walking foot is. A walking foot um, does something similar. It is not standard with the machine. It is something you will have to buy in addition to it. But, um, probably can be in the hundred to hundred and fifty dollar range but if you it might enable you to purchase a two thousand dollar machine and a hundred dollar walking foot and get the capability that you need rather than purchasing the five thousand dollar machine so look into that if those options are important to you um, number three, which is um, a feature I really didn't think about, but which um, my readers um, felt were very important, and that is the automatic needle threader. Again, this is not something that you have to go to a high-end machine to get. It's very common. And it's just a button here on the side that's going to thread that needle for you. Now, that can be really important if, um, you know, your eyesight, <laughs> if that's getting a little bit um, more difficult. But the other thing that my readers pointed out was if they had any kind of arthritis, having that needle threader um, was a tremendous help. Um, I skipped one in order of priority <laughs> wasn't looking at my notes but let me show that to you and that's the knee lift and again that is something that um, gives you control so let me point it down here there is the knee lift for you right down there and how that works is that as you're sewing with your knee here you can just push this and it raises that presser foot up for you temporarily it's a matter again of control. If you have the needle down and this enables you to raise your presser foot with your knee, you now have two hands that can manipulate the fabric as you're sewing along. 
So two more features that my readers did not mention, but which I have found tremendously important are the needle position and what is called the mirror imaging function. Now the needle position is the ability of um, the needle to shift from left to right. And the reason that's important is um, almost all machines who can, that can do a zigzag will have um, a needle that shifts from left to right. But you want to find out how many different needle positions the machine has. I was recently teaching a class and the gal um, had a machine that only allowed three different positions and we were making piping and she had a very difficult time doing that because she couldn't get that needle over against the piping as much as it needed to be. Um, the mirror image feature just flips the orientation of the stitch and that's important for um, stitches that have a particular orientation. So if you can see my number three here is a blind hem stitch and um, you have to stitch that in a particular direction. If you can flip it, that can save you from having to stuff the entire garment through the hole here if you need it to go in the other direction. And that is what makes that um, very helpful and why I wanted it when I upgraded to this machine. Now, two other features that um, my readers mentioned that were really important to them were the automatic buttonhole and the embroidery unit. So let's talk the automatic buttonhole first. Essentially what that is, is you push a button and it stitches the entire buttonhole in one go. And when you go to the shop to look at machines, you definitely want to see how your machine makes a buttonhole. It's you know standard, you need to be able to make buttons, and one that does that easily is really important. So um, have it do that and see if you like um, how it comes out and get them to try it on a trickier fabric, either one that's really thick or one that's really thin rather than sort of that standard quilt, quilting cotton. Um, for uh, the, um, the embroidery unit, that, you know, it's a whole nother world. Are you going to get into machine embroidery or not? Um, of course, you might think that you don't want to, but if you can get it, if the budget allows it, it might be something that you'll want to do, even if you don't want to do it initially. Um, but another consideration there as well, as many readers mentioned, that they love using their embroidery unit to do the buttonholes. So again, that's something you might want to ask um, when you go to the store if you want to consider that. Finally, um, I think, yeah, that, uh, nope, automatic tension. Okay, automatic tension is not something that a lot of readers mentioned, um, but I think it's partly because we just take it for granted. So again, that is something you do want to check out when you go to the store, whether the machine has automatic tension, how does it handle those different weights of fabric? Um, automatic tension, you, it, the machine just senses that it's gone from a wool coating to a batiste and it adjusts the tension accordingly. But check that out. How is that machine handling those different thicknesses of fabric? Okay, there was one feature though that people did mention that they don't like, particularly on the high-end machines. And what is that? Well, most of the high-end machines have removed the lever in the back that lets you manually raise and lower the um, presser foot. And um, my readers were really annoyed that that, that is gone. And instead, there's a button that um, does it. And I will admit, when I got this machine, it took, I can't tell you how many times I reached back here for the lever and it's not there. Um, and I do miss it. Now, I don't know if this is the case with all machines. In the case of this machine, they can't have the lever because that's where the dual feed is. And that could be part of the issue. But Again, it's something else you might want to look at and ask about when you go to the store.
So I hope that all of these tips and considerations and features have helped you um, and that you will be able to go and find your dream machine. If you like these videos, please um, give me a subscribe and a thumbs up. And I hope to see you again. And in the meantime, happy sewing.